Good morning everybody, welcome back to Sprinter Van Conversions. You're joining me today on this conversion that I'm doing of this blue 2010 medium wheelbase Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. But today's video is not about the conversion. Today's video is a bit of maintenance on the van itself. Oh yes, welcome back to the channel everybody. Thanks again for joining me here on YouTube. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe and turn on notifications if you'd like to be kept up to date with all of our videos going forward. But until then, today we are doing the front brakes on this uh, Sprinter van. It's a job that I've done before, but it's not a job that I've ever documented before. So I'm excited to share it with you. There's a few little tips and tricks uh, that will help you do it if you are looking to do the brakes on your own Sprinter. So as you guys know, we're not actually gonna be keeping this Sprinter for long. As soon as I've converted it, I'm gonna try and sell it. But I knew when we bought the van that the, the brakes needed replacing right from when I bought it and even though it's got an MOT and even though it does drive and stop, <laughs> um, just for peace of mind and for the future owners, whoever they are, we just wanted to replace the brakes so that we know that it's safe and uh, that it's going to stop when you put your foot on the pedal. So obviously we're going to need some bits to do this job. As you can see, I've just got some gloves, some uh, sockets and a ratchet, some blue roll, super handy. Got my axle stands, three ton per stand capacity. Got my impact driver with my half inch driver bit on it, which takes my impact socket. Obviously some brake cleaner. Got this little toolkit of Torx heads, which we're gonna need to be able to remove the location screw that's on the, um, on the discs themselves. Up here, we've obviously got our bottle jack. We've got a torque wrench in there, our persuader, a little bit of uh, copper grease in case we need it, and of course the discs and the pads. So the very first part of this job is to make sure that your work environment is safe. I've chopped the back wheels with a couple of bricks so that there's no chance that the van can roll forward. We're on such an ever so slightly incline on our driveway. I did that so that the water runs off when I built the driveway. So number one thing is to make sure that the van's not gonna go anywhere. Now the handbrake's really good on this van and it's in reverse gear. So really it shouldn't go anywhere, but just belt and braces, chock the back wheels. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do is to uncrack, I would call, the, the, the bolts on the front wheels. That's before you jack it up in the air because once you jack up a rear wheel drive vehicle in the air, there's no chance that you're gonna be able to undo those nuts without the front wheels spinning. So while the wheels are still on the floor, make sure you uncrack the bolts on the front wheels. Yeah, you can see here how the discs are pretty worn. There's a hell of a lip on the edge there. Yeah, there's probably two or three mil on the inside and on the outside. I'm not sure what the inside of the disc is like. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. It's pretty even wear, I would say, but yeah, again, another lip. Really glad that we're replacing these brakes. And the pads. Yeah, the pads are pretty low. Don't know if you can see that, but yeah. We've got new shocks on here, thankfully. Uh, I knew that from when we bought it. The, uh, the seller said that it had new shocks. I didn't see any paperwork for it, unfortunately, but I can see here that they are very, very new. They're just a bit muddy. So really, really pleased about that. No shocks having to be replaced. Um, although this is a bit annoying because they could have put a new 
shock cover on but it looks like this has got an integrated cover here unless that's no that's just slipped down there we go so maybe I'll put a cable tie around the top there but yeah really happy with new shock something that I forgot to do is open the bonnet and why am I opening the bonnet because this is the brake fluid reservoir and I need to take the cap off that to allow the pressure to go up and down within the reservoir you can see that the reservoir looks quite new and all of this looks quite new but then again the van's not done many miles so maybe it is original but I'll take that off to allow the fluid level to go up and down as I'm playing with the calipers putting the new putting the new pads in always be careful with brake fluid because it's a really severe paint stripper so you don't want to get it anywhere Okay, so now you can see I've got the main caliper off. I've tucked it away just behind the shock so that there's no pressure on that flexi, uh, flexi brake line. And now here, you can see our old brake pads. And they're super thin. And they've got these little ABS sensors on them. So make sure that you remove those and reuse them unless you've got new ones. I haven't got new ones. So I'm gonna keep these and put them on the new pads. And then the pads are really, really loose. Hope you can see that. The pads are really, really loose. So they just need a bit of leverage. And they're gonna come out easily. They're not on their last legs, but they could do with replacing. You can see they're pretty low. Only about three or four mil left on those. Now then, the next thing to do is to undo that nut. So I need my 30 Torx bit to get that undone. Oh, I'm struggling. This disc just does not want to come off. And I've had it in the before when they've been really stuck, but even with this, with this hefty, hefty old, ugh, hefty old club hammer, I still can't get it off. <sighs> A few more hits, hopefully it will come off. Hey! Super glad I got that off. As you might be able to see here, this is the hub itself that the disc bolts onto, and then the wheel bolts go through the disc and into the hub. But yeah, really happy that that's off. Now I'm gonna clean this up and put the new disc on. <laughs> so when these discs come in the box, they're covered in grease to prevent them from rusting, which is the most ironic thing ever. So you need to make sure that you've got some blue roll or some sort of rag, give them a good clean off and use some brake cleaner just to get all of the grease off. Give them a good spray, do both sides and then they should be good to go when you put them back on the hubs. That one doesn't have to be too tight, just nip it up. I, there is actually no point in that because once the wheel bolts go through, they hold it in place. But that screw is basically just there to hold the disc in place for when you're removing and putting on the wheel, basically. Ugh. 
So here you can see the difference between the old and the new disc. <laughs> it's quite a bit different, isn't it? At the beginning of the video when I went through all the stuff that you need to do this job, I totally omitted a G-clamp. G-clamps are super important and I only just remembered when I came to fit the pads just now, well, fit the caliper over the new pads, that I remembered I need to push the pistons on the caliper back. Really easy way to do that is with a bit of wood and some G-clamps. I say really easy, we'll see. <laughs> So now the pistons are really pushed back into the caliper. I should be able to take these G clamps off, take the bit of wood out, and it should slide, slide straight over the new pads. And the suppliers of the pads actually gave us new bolts as well, so I'll use these new bolts in the back of the caliper. Oh yes, thanks again for joining in today's video everybody. This has been a video on how to do your front brakes on the Sprinter, but please remember, disclaimer, <laughs> I am not a Mercedes-Benz mechanic, I'm not a mechanic at all. I'm just a DIYer. So this video is more of how I do it rather than how you necessarily should do it. But I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give us a like. If you found it interesting, subscribe. And if you'd like to keep up to date with the rest of the conversion, then please don't forget to turn on notifications so you're notified of every time we upload a video. We try and release a video every Sunday, so hopefully you'll tune back in next week. Thanks again for joining everybody. We'll see you in the next one. Over and out. Okay, so I had said that was the end of the video, but on the other side of the van, I've come across a problem. As you can see here, I've taken the caliper off and on the other side, there wasn't any issue. But on this side, one of these sprung loaded, don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Is that focusing? One of these sprung loaded uh, bolt holders essentially that hold the caliper onto the um, onto this which is the I'm not sure what you call this the pad holder um, these are meant to flow up and down nice and fluidly like that one does and you can see how shiny the edge of that is that's been replaced but this one wouldn't go and it was really difficult to get this why well, isn't it focusing? This one would, was really hard to get off of the um, to get off of the the color uh, the pad holder. So I've had to knock it through, and this is it here. You can see this is what's meant to go up and down within that shaft, but it was seized. So I had to knock it out with the end of a. <laughs> I had to put the end of that in there, hit the other end of it with a hammer to drive it out. I've got it out and now I just need to rub it down with a bit of emery cloth, well a bit of wet and dry and re-grease it and put it back in and then it will flow easily and then what you do is on these little rubber caps that go on the end when you finish the job once you've done your allen keys up once they go on like that once they go on like that then you fill the inside of that with some uh, with some grease so that if any water does get in there and get down in between this shaft it won't you know corrode it as severely 
but that's the idea anyway so now I've just rubbed this down rubbed down the the rust off it now I'm gonna hit it with some copper grease stick it back in there it should be good as gold could replace it alternatively but yeah I can renew it and reuse it so that's what I'm gonna do I hope you found that last little bit <laughs> interesting hopefully you don't come across this issue I've come across it once before on uh, our silver sprinter um, so I knew sort of how to attack it so yeah if this happens to you then give that a go anyway <laughs> for real now thanks a lot for watching the video we'll see you next week over and out